emotional pains. Uh, I'll be unable to get to God and say this. I'm not unmindful of the fact that this house, which was one of the most powerful houses, rather the only powerful house of this great country. And this august house has done not only memorable but commendable job in the past. And today, fortunately or unfortunately, I appear for extending my thanks to the Honorable Lieutenant Governor on his address as one of the peak assembly of this country. Without supplanting rather supplementing whatever has been said by one of my honorable colleague member. I extend my thanks, gratitude to Honorable Lieutenant Governor for an inclusive and our all touching all the sectors developmental sectors in his speech, be it employment, be it health sector, school, education sector, providing free electricity, 200 uh, unit free electricity to the deserving houses. How can I forget to make a mention here that Honorable Speaker has not only and his address included the <clears throat> old and informs to the poor of this area. How can I forget Honorable Lieutenant Governor's mention of restoration of statehood and special status of Jammu and Kashmir? <coughs> And yesterday one resolution was moved before this house and some of us has raised certain suspicions about the intent and purpose and the language used. But to my understanding as a student of law, more particularly of the constitutional law, there can, could not have been any better ways to express the intention of this house in the resolution. There can be nothing else than Article 370 which guarantees us the special status. There is no other provision except Article 370 and 35A. So making a mention of restoration of special status would include Article 370 and 35A. <coughs> Before proceeding further in my thanks to the Honorable Lieutenant Governor, let me say that some of us have raised very serious question about the resolution on the ground that it is against the judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court. Their argument and their suggestions are totally fallacious. Nowhere in the judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court, Supreme Court has ever said that Article 370 was unconstitutional or it was ultra wise the Constitution. And let me be clear on it. Under the Supreme Court has upheld wrongly or rightly. I may have personal differences. I may have a different opinion about the judgment of the Supreme Court. And Supreme Court is supreme only because it is the final authority. I have a respect for this agreement and I may have with the judgment of the Supreme Court. The Honorable Supreme Court never, nowhere has said that Article 370 was unconstitutional. What the Honorable Supreme Court has said is simple. That the way adopted by the government of India, the parliament, 
was in Trabayos the Constitution. How can Supreme Court say that Article 370 serves as Trabayos the Constitution? And I wonder when slogans was raised, slogans were raised in this house also, Pakistani agenda. Article 370 was never given by the Constituent Assembly of the Pakistan. It was the same Constituent Assembly which gave us this Constitution, the sacred document, this week. And it was deliberated for days together. It was a solemn agreement, a solemn pledge with the people of Jammu and Kashmir. <laughs> by the Constituent Assembly, by our forefathers. <laughs> Can anybody deny? Can you say that the Constituent Assembly of India, which framed the Constitution and which has successfully held the entire nation together, has successfully worked, was framed by the people who were not having a faith in India? If Article 370 was ultra virus, if, if, if Article 370 was bad, was not the Constitution then bad? So they are raising an objection against their own forefathers. Do you think that you are wiser than your forefathers who thank the Constitution? Do you think that you can think better than our forefathers? When you are raising question, when you are raising finger against Article 370, you are raising finger against the Constitution Assembly of this country, which gave you the Constitution itself. And let me say, statehood is not only our constitutional right, but a right by our part. We were promised by, the, by this nation that you will be treated respectfully in future in 1950 when the constitution came into be. You have stepped back. I will come later in my address about the statehood. Let me first say that for the last five and a half years, rather six and a half years, we have been hearing Many things which do not exist on ground. Development, brotherhood, peace, rightly said by Honorable Philip, Honorable Emily, that the peace secured under the climate of the gun is not peace at all, it is a suppression. And that can never endure. And it has never endured in the past. And let me say, but certainly, I hope this honorable house, this august house, will appreciate it. Before the honorable Supreme Court, there were two questions to be answered. One was that we filed the petition. The first question was that our, the process adopted, the way adopted by the parliament and the governor, the then governor was unconstitutional. The second question which was to be answered by the Honorable Supreme Court was, and that came for the first time before the Supreme Court, because never ever in the history of independent India any state was reduced to a union territory. There was no precedent before the Supreme Court, there was no convention before the Supreme Court to answer this question, whether Parliament unilaterally without seeking the consent of the Legislative Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir, can change the boundaries of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, can reduce a state into a union territory, that was the pivotal question before the Honorable Constitutional Bench of the Supreme Court. And I just want to remind this August House that Union Government, through their Attorney General, made a pledge before the Honorable Supreme Court that it is this union territory status, status is a temporary 
We are going to restore it very soon. That was the statement given by the Attorney General before the Constitutional Bench. And you know what happened? The Constitutional Bench, headed by another Chief Justice of India, deferred this vital question, constitutional issue to be decided. And in the judgment they said that we need not to decide this issue at this moment. Because the Attorney General has given us an undertaking that they are going to restore the statehood very soon. Therefore, we defer this question to be considered for future litigation. Very strange enough. But yet the Honorable Supreme Court acted upon the suggestion made by the Attorney General. Almost give or take a few days. One year has lapsed. And there is nothing, not even a whisper on behalf, on behalf of the Union government to restore the state. I intend to go back to the Honorable Supreme Court. And definitely I will go. I will request the Honorable Supreme Court to explain the words used in the judgment itself. When they have said that as early as possible, statehood must be restored to Jammu and Kashmir. It is not only a statehood for us. It is an honor, a dignity of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. If you have any statehood, and under the Supreme Court shut its eyes and bet on the, on the assurance given by the Attorney General. We will request through this August House the Union Government to restore our statehood as early as possible in compliance with the judgment of the Supreme Court. Lest we should go back to the Supreme Court seeking a further interpretation of the judgment of the Supreme Court. How can I forget that another left-hand governor in his address has made a specific mention, significant mention of restoration of the statehood and the restoration of the special status, which was guaranteed by the people of this great country. And it was in the backdrop of a peculiar facts and circumstances. In 1947, this was the state which was a Muslim majority state. And we had the option to choose either the two-nation theory have to choose a secular democratic country. We opted for a secular democratic country to be a part of. And we feel proud even today. We may have grievances with the, with the Union government. We may have differences. They may have done injustice to us. But we still feel proud to be a member of this nation. That's not doubt in it. I just want to bring it on the record of this August House. That we are not going to stop here. We are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied. So long as we get back our statehood, so long as we get back our special status, which was guaranteed to us by none else than the constituent assembly of this great nation which framed the constitution of India. We are not going to stop here. <coughs> and we are ready to sacrifice. We are ready to sacrifice our posterity. <coughs> and I want to tell those who say that we don't need special status. You have a right. You have a constitutional right also, under Article 90, <coughs> to wave up your rights. If I have a constitutional right to possess the property, I have a right to abandon the property. But who has given you this right? You have got no business, no right to abandon the right and forego the right of your posterity. You, this special status is not for the contemporary population or contemporary uh, time. It is for generations to come. I can forego my right 
but how can I forego the right of my sons and daughters? This right belongs to the posterity. And we are supposed to protect it. We are supposed to protect it like our own property, so that our posterity will remember us. They will name us with dignity. We have seen anastrophe in the past five and six years. By fine placement of words, <coughs> we have tried to prove horse chestnut to be a chestnut horse. This anastrophe has completely failed. It has not worked. We could not prove a horse chestnut to be a chestnut horse. And this playing with the words, using those words which could fancy you only for the time being. But you cannot as has been said by one of the philosophers and the wise men, that you can befool all the people for some of the time, some of the people for all the time, but you cannot befool all the people for all the time. So you have tried to befool the nation. On this ground that this special status has proven violence. On this ground that this has been a this has been a stumbling block in the development of this state. But data has proved otherwise. Your own data proved it that we were far better. We were better in in the sector of health. We were better in the sector of education. We were better on per capita basis than any other part of this country. And how come you say that this special status has breeded corruption? It has been a stumbling block for the government of this Jammu and Kashmir. We have said earlier also. Let us sit together and let us make a comparison. That how we have been performing for the last five years without Article 370. How can I forget that our education sector is totally crumbled? Our health sector is in a, in a very bad shape. And the Lieutenant Governor has made a mention in his speech, in his address, about the health, about the education. I'll take just two more minutes, if I'm permitted. Other members also want to speak. Leave some points for them to discuss. Yes. I, I, I can I, I will do one minute. I, I'm, I'm grateful to the other speaker that he has given me one more minute. I want to just, just bring on record of this honorable house that this house will regain its pristine glory one day. One day we will get back our special status. Together we will fight for the dignity of Jammu and Kashmir as well. <coughs> I am from Jammu. There are people who simply say that we represent the Jammu. <coughs> Jammu does not belong to any particular person or any particular party. We want to get back the dignity of the Jammu and Kashmir together. We want to march ahead, taking a great deal now with the cooperation of all the communities of this state. Together we will fight. Together we will get back our lost glory. Together we will restore the dignity. And one day, I hope, this house will again be the most powerful house <laughs> in this case. Great country. Thank you.